this subject matter for a young lady. Are you suggesting the work belongs to Mr. Shelley? It is my story. She was a teenage girl whose first novel became a modern myth. This year marks 200 years since Mary Shelley's gothic masterpiece, Frankenstein, was first published. For the anniversary, the multi-award winning British poet and writer Fiona Sampson brings us In Search of Mary Shelley. Fiona's previous works have been published in more than 35 languages and she has an MBE for services to literature. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, there are numerous books and biographies on Mary Shelley. Why did you think we still need to search for her? Well, that's such a great question. I think two things, really. I think that every great figure, and I think Mary was a great figure, needs re-examining. I think that we need a biography for the 21st century. Um, and I also felt that Mary Shelley is someone who's been very thoroughly researched but I felt a lot of that research didn't bring her to life. I felt that there was a sense of Mary as good or bad for Percy Bysshe Shelley. And then there was a kind of feminist reclamation, which is fantastic, but still a little bit two-dimensional. And I didn't think that those ways of thinking about her told us how it could be that an 18-year-old could come up with this astonishing myth, the myth of Frankenstein, complete with its archetypes. Nor did I feel that she'd been sort of well served by being left as a two-dimensional character. I wanted to, I wanted to find the real Mary. Well, Mary's life is a page-turning story and it is monstrous in places, a bit like Frankenstein. Her mother died just after she was born. Um, when she was 16, she eloped with the poet Percy Shelley. She endured um, disgrace, debt, her husband's infidelity and, like, horrendously, the deaths of three children. Yes. Then, um, in 1822, her husband drowns and she's left um, to kind of make a living for herself. She's cut, cut off from her family and her friends and, and she's raising this one child and that they've got. That's like summarising her life very quickly. That's a beautiful there. summary. <laughs> What's the most surprising thing that you learnt about Mary Shelley? I think the most surprising thing I learnt about her was that the woman, or the girl, and then the woman, who was hiding in plain sight was a very sort of straightforward... She wasn't, in a sense, a romantic with a small r. She may have been a romantic in the sense of a carrier of romantic political and social ideas and a writer in romantic genres, but she herself was quite straightforward, quite emotionally literal, a very devoted mother, a very good friend. I don't really think the life into which she fell, what we'd now call bohemian, this life with um, lots of worries about money, constantly on the move, um, lots of sexual infidelity, was really what she wanted at all. I think she was an old-fashioned girl who fell in love with an older unfortunately married man uh, when she was a teenager at 16 and didn't really understand the consequences of that, the consequences for the wife, the first wife, nor the consequences for herself. And so I think her whole life is slightly square peg in a round hole. There's this quite straightforward, I want to say decent, almost plodding, serious, intellectual young woman. And there's this bohemian life with mistresses and lovers and the two don't really fit. She also wrote five more books. She did. That uh, people have tried to bring back. Yes. Um, but absolutely, did something, did something happen when he died that affected uh, Mary's literary Talent. career when her husband died? <laughs> That's such a great way to put it. No, I don't think so. I think that what happened was that she grew up as a writer and she became more conventional. I think the great sort of shame for Mary's posthumous reputation is that now when we really see that she was truly a major writer, we've managed to put to rest all those rumours about Percy really wrote Frankenstein or Frankenstein, Frankenstein is a fragmentary novel which has been brought to life by the films. We've put all of that to rest and we've understood it's a great book. Um, but unfortunately her other novels are rather sort of in the mode of Walter Scott. They're big, meaty, for the time very well researched, often historical novels. Although one of them, The Last Man, was the first dystopian novel, so she not only wrote the first science fiction novel, Frankenstein, she wrote the first dystopian novel, uh, The Last Man. But they are, 
they're more ponderous, they're more fleshed out. So it's kind of her tragedy that now, when we appreciate her as a writer, we no longer appreciate the kind of writing that she mainly did. Well, I learned actually a lot about the author in Haifa Al-Mansour's um, film Mary Shelley, which stars Elle Fanning um, as the writer. It came out earlier this year, and Haifa was actually a guest on the show in July. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. It's a coming-of-age story about a young girl trying to find her voice. In England, when England was conservative 200 years ago, it is not as conservative as conservative as Saudi Arabia, for sure, but still women were expected to be in a certain way and act in a certain way. And Mary Shelley went on, on and wrote something original, arguably created science fiction, where, where Jane Austen was the star at the time, who wrote about love and jealousy, and but all in the domestic sphere. So I... And she's way more famous than Mary Shelley. She's, so I felt, like, obligated to tell the story. You dare question a woman's ability to experience loss, betrayal, death. If I had not learned to fight through the anguish, I would not have found this voice. My choice has made me who I am, and I regret nothing. One moment we learn about in the book is where Mary Shelley gets the idea for Frankenstein. How relevant is it and how significant is it that cr the, the creator of this monster was a woman? Yes, I think that's interesting because, of course, in the book, the creator of the monster is a man, but Mary creates both the man and his creature. I think it's very significant that not just that she was a woman, but that she was a woman who had lost her own mother as a result of her birth. Mary Wollstonecraft died 10 days after our Mary, Mary Godwin, as she was then, was born. Um, and a woman who has herself, by this stage, lost one child, given birth to another, and is pregnant with another while she's writing. In fact, gives birth to her third child while she's finishing Frankenstein. So she will, in fact, lose both those two living children later and tragically, but while she's writing, she's known the death of a child and she's known, you know, a live birth. So I think it's very significant because, of course, one of the things she may well be saying is, you need women to do this right, guys. Tell us what you're working on now, Fiona. Well, I'm very interested in women writers and how transgressive they are. Mary Shelley was transgressive, as we heard in the clip. And I'm interested, I'm writing now a biography of Elizabeth Barrett Browning, who was an absolutely canonical 19th century poet figure and she's particularly interesting because she wrote Aurora Lee which is the first it's a novel in verse but it's the first story about a woman becoming a writer so it's incredibly interesting about the 19th century version of how a woman becomes a writer you yourself are a writer and a poet I was wondering could you read us a poem yes I'd love to um, let me read you this poem which is called crossing this is for my next book which is called come down crossing Come down where the bridge narrows and darkens, the fast-moving river. Two movements, contrary and conjoined, where water rushes against stone that hands itself like a passing shadow over the bright surface of a river, racing away from the shock of self. Come and see stone moon down like memory through water cold enough to drown you. Two movements crossing over cannot pass, but they do. Bridge and water, sky and stone climb continually from the unchanged river. Thank you so much. Um, we're get, we end every show with our guests' cultural pick of the moment. What have you chosen for us? Well, I am very much enjoyed the exhibition of Frida Kahlo's self-invention at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London at the moment. Of course, it, in a sense, is a biographer's show because it isn't looking at her artwork, but about her. it's looking at her personal adornment and the way she managed the fact her body had been crippled in this terrible... Um, motorbus accident um, so she had a had to wear a spinal corset which she decorated beautifully she wore extraordinary almost imperial costumes rather than conventional dresses she had a prosthetic leg which is also brightly colored some critiques of that exhibition have said well it diminishes her as an artist because it talks about her as a suffering person but I don't think it's like that I think it's because she was a great artist that we want to go behind the scenes and see the biographical detail
Okay, Fiona, thank you so much for joining us. The exhibition Frida Kahlo Making Herself Up is on at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London until November. And we're going to leave you with that. Fiona Sampson's book In Search of Mary Shelley is available now. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs>